Hey there friends, welcome to my quilt lab. Cynthia here. I am working on Symphony. This is a block of the month sponsored by Banyan Boutiques of Northcott. I'm doing this lovely neutral colorway and this is the video for block number eight. That's right, month number eight, block number eight. Let's dig in and see what month number eight has in store for us. Let's go. Okay, so block number eight is a combination block of a couple of techniques we've already done in the past. We're combining month one, which was that square in the square, and last month, month seven's four square patch. So you can see that there are three variations, three different colorways. You're going to be making two of the A and one each of the C of the B and the C block. So I'm just going to set these aside since I've only done one of the A. Here's my other pieces. There we go. So you can see that there's the two square and the squares. And like I said, it's just like the block number one, that first block. So if you want to go back and look at that video for some extra tips and tricks, go ahead and take a look at that. I will be covering it here though. And the only difference between month one or block one and this is that this is significantly smaller than what we did the first time around. So they're, you know, they're making it just a smidgen harder by making the, the blocks just a little bit smaller this time around. But still a fun and easy block. So let's concentrate on this part first you'll see that you'll get two of that dark one and you're gonna have four little squares for each of those dark ones. So let's just pull those aside. So let's dig into this. You'll see that there is a tutorial page for the, the square and a square. And I do mine just a little bit differently, but please feel free to follow the page exactly as well. It has you put these little squares in each corner and you're gonna be doing a diagonal seam from point to point. So your best bet is to grab a ruler, whether it's one of the half square triangle ones that lets you put the seam there in the center. And I'm lining up my corner to corner. Or just a regular ruler like this and drawing a little line diagonally. This is just to help you visualize where you're gonna be stitching. You're gonna be stitching right on that diagonal and then you're gonna trim away the extra and then open this up so that it continues having that square look. I do like to throw a little pin in just to make sure I don't drop anything on the way to my sewing machine. In the tutorial page, it does one corner at a time, which is fine. I like to do opposites because it's less time for me to travel from the table to the sewing machine to the iron. So I can do these two stitches first, cut away, press open, and then do the opposite sides as a repeat. And then my square is completely done. Whatever works for you, works for you though. So either whether you use the tutorial page method or my page. I'm going to go and do this really quick, those two stitches. I'll take a couple pictures and I'll see you in just a bit. To the machine! All right, so you're doing that twice. So you have two square and a squares, little mini square and a squares, and then you wanna grab your filler squares or your connector squares, I think is what the instructions caught. You wanna make sure that that square and a square though is the exact same size as what it was originally. So if you do need to shape up those sides, go ahead and do that before you move on to this next step. So the next step is back to that month seven, we're doing that four patch Super easy, fun step to do. First we're making rows, and then we are going to nest in the center and do that last row, that last center seam to make the whole block. 
Now anytime I am putting blocks together and I'm getting ready to take it to the machine, I like to have the plain block on the bottom. That's where my feed dogs are going to attach to. I like seeing this, the seamed block, that square and a square on top for a couple of reasons. First, it's just nicer for those, those feed dogs, right, when they pull in that fabric forward. But here's the other thing. I know that that quarter of an inch is supposed to be that seam right there, that little cross where those two stitches are. So when I'm putting this under my machine and I'm watching my needle, I'm really aiming my, my needle to hit that bullseye, that X marks the spot. That way when it, I, when I go to open it back up, it's gonna be a nice point. And if for any reason my square and a square is a little bit smaller, I don't have to worry about that because I know that I need to aim. I need my needle to hit that X marks the spot. So I'm gonna do that with both of these. I like to throw a couple pins in, again, just to make sure that I don't drop anything on the way to the machine. I'm gonna go do these two stitches. I'll be right back to the sewing machine. Let's get stitching. All right, so I've done those two seams. Let me just flip this over. I pressed towards that connector block, that plain block, only because there's a lot of fabric here and I just thought it would be easier if the pressing went that way. I know it is kind of going towards the lighter side of the fabric, but it's not too much lighter. If that really does bother you, you can open that seam up if you want. You can press it open. Uh, I just That's just a lot of bulk right there and I like it to stay as flat as possible. All right, so the last seam is that center seam right there. We're gonna butt these two folds up against one another. And I'm just gonna scoot it across the fabric to where it butts up. There it is. I'll pull that back so you can see. Lines right nicely up with each other. I'm gonna throw a pin in right on top of that stitching. Comes through the stitching on the other side. And that way, it's ready for the machine. Now you'll notice that I'm only gonna see one cross on one side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a pin through the cross on the other side, straight through. That way I know when I'm stitching this way, I know that I need to aim for where this pin comes out of the fabric. So I'm gonna take this pin out at the last second before my needle hits it, and I want my needle to hit where that pin is right there. Or if you wanted to, you could always grab your ruler and put a little, a little mark there so that you know you get that nice crisp point. So let's take this to the machine. I'll see you in just a second. And there she is, all done. That's the second one of that A block. And don't forget, you're gonna be making a B variation and a C variation as well. So two of the A's and one each of the B and the C. That is it for block number eight, month number eight. Hey, I hope you stick around for the rest of the year. Let's see, I can't wait to see what nine is all about, but until then, give these guys a little press, a little starch if you feel like it. Don't forget to add your labels. That'll come in real handy when we put this sucker together at the end of the year. And as always, I'll see you next time. Keep quilting. Bye-bye.